Hi, I'm Christy, and this is episode 15 of A Fostered Life. And today I'm going to go through, um, this is probably going to end up being a multi multi-episode series again um, because I want to keep the videos pretty short but I want to talk about the village the foster care village um, you've probably heard it said it takes a village to raise a child I completely believe that but for the foster child the village is even bigger and um, the most important thing a foster parent can do and I've said this over and over but the most important thing the most important part of a foster parents job is to give your foster child or children stability consistency love and predictability if they get that for a long period of time over the course of months or even if they're only with you for a few days they will begin to feel safe and heal and you'll see um, you'll see a new child emerge um, most of the children who come into foster care have seen trauma whether it's abuse neglect um, abandonment whatever it may be they've seen trauma and it's affected them for some it's affected them in small ways for some it's affected them in major ways but um, the the best thing to do to address that is to offer consistency predictability um, love and stability so um, so that's the first most important job of being a foster parent. The second most important job, part of your job as a foster parent, is um, to build a village for that child that will address all of their needs. And the way you do this is by taking advantage of what's available. Um, but you have to be very proactive. And this is kind of what I want to get across in this video or in these videos is, in the United States at least, there are a lot of services that are available and that your foster child is entitled to. But it is your role to be proactive and put those services, those people, those specialists, whatever it may be, to put them in place. So I wanna talk about the various people who might be part of your foster family's village. I have a little visitor here. This is my cat, Maya. Um, she wants to say hello. There she is, hello. She's out right now because the baby is sleeping. <laughs> when the toddler is up and around, we don't see much of the cat because she's smart and she knows to stay away. But anyway, um, so um, I'm just going to quickly go through these. I might share a little bit more details on each role, but, um, but I've talked about some of them in previous videos, so I'm not going to get into all of it. But the first person in your village is the trainer, and I've talked about trainers before in my um, what to expect when you're expecting to be a foster parent video so you can go back and look at that um, but the second person in the village is the licensor and that's the person who licenses you to become a foster parent and once you you have your license in place you won't see much of them unless there are licensing violations which can be anything from gosh well you know I'm not even gonna get into that right now I might do a different video on that um, we haven't seen much of our licensor so um, we're in good shape for that but um, but yeah, the only reason you'd see the licensor is if they need to pop in and check on things, if they need to double check aspects of your license, making sure that you're in compliance and that sort of thing. The third person and the person who you will have probably the most interaction with um, uh, or one of the people you'll have regular interaction with is your caseworker. Now, um, we had an amazing caseworker for the first six months of being foster parents and we didn't know how good we had it when we had her. Um, we had her for six months and then she moved to a different office um, and we, so she's not in our jurisdiction anymore and so she had to give up our case. Um, but we loved her and if you're watching Ashley, we miss you. Um, we just, you were wonderful. And um, she just, she was communicative, she was in touch, she was available, she always responded to me. And, um, and she was proactive in making sure I knew the services that were available um, for our kids. And so I'm grateful, forever grateful for her. We have had, I think, three more caseworkers since her. We've kind of gotten a new caseworker every other month or so for the last five months. And that's been a little bit hard, just the inconsistency of it. And frankly, when you don't have a caseworker who's with you for very long, they're not as invested personally in your case so they might get the job done but um it's great when you have a caseworker who is like really invested and really really cares deeply about the children you have um anyway so that's the third person the fourth person in the village is um, a child therapist and um 
again, we have just had such a great experience with the therapist that we worked with. Um, every week for the last 10 or 11 months, we have been in that therapist's office and, you know, the investment that they've made in our lives um, has been palpable. And while he's really the, the therapist for our child, it has really helped me as well. Um, I go to all of the therapy sessions. Now, I will stop and say, as a foster parent, you are not required to go to all of this. Um, you can drop the child, I guess, and then leave and come back or... Um, you can even, you know, if you're full, if you're working full time and you can't make all of it, you can even make the caseworker, I think, um, take the kid to um, their therapy sessions. That's not how I've rolled. Um, I've gone to everything, and I think that that has played a role in the consistency and stability that our child has felt. But that being said, um, the, the the therapist is just is part of the family. I mean, becomes part of the the village. Um, in offering guidance and perspective and insight into how best to um, address things that your child is going through. So I'm going to leave it there, um, and I'll do part two in, in a moment and offer that to you as well. But So the first four members of the village are um, trainers, licensor, caseworker, and therapist. But I would love to know about your experiences, especially if you are in different places in the world or um, different parts of the U.S. What's your experience been with these people? Have you found good, um, good people to be in your village? Share your experiences here, and if you have any questions, please leave them below, and I'll do my best to answer them. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video when I will do part two of the Foster Care Village.